So, so this is this is the jade workshop. This is a little jade workshop. Um, we've got a point carver here. So point carver is. So I can turn on. Um, like a big drill, is it? But, but with a, well, these are, are burrs. You can see the burrs. All different size burrs here. Is it glistening in there? Yeah, what diamond people, burrs. People can see the glistening there. Yes. And um, I can take this chuck off and put this grinding wheel in. Okay. So this is a 100 grit diamond. Yes, diamond again, yeah. So with a 100 grit, it's a roughing out wheel. All right. Uh, quite coarse. And it re does it get through the jade, does it? Oh, quite quickly. Quite yeah. Quick. Okay. Yeah, jade um, on the Mohs scale, which is diamonds are 10. And, and this, is, this is, is the one. scale of hardness, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Moh, M-O-H. Mr. Moh was a German who invented that scale. All right. So, um, jade, for instance, is about uh, six and a quarter, six and a half. Mm -hmm. And this is a bit of New Zealand mottled cream and green. Is that sought after the mottled stuff, or are they? Oh, uh, it's just my personal taste. Mm. So this is roughed out. At this stage, I have to polish it. Okay. Same so when it's polished, it'll all come up nice and shiny green. Yeah, like and you'll that. see the colour much better. So here's another jade pebble, yellowish green, a little bit murky. Um, so I do all that on this point carver machine. Okay, yep. And then when I want to refine aspects, I use this uh, hand piece and I put in a diamond, diamond burr. Um, no, that one won't fit. Um, what do we got here? It's a little ball burr. And that's for more finer work. Yeah. So we can switch it on. Yeah, um, goes up to about 30,000 revs. Okay. Which beats that there and... Uh, so I'll use, I'll use this for finer work. You know, such as, as in these grooves, different shaped burrs. Okay. Um, and I'll use, uh, of course, I use this bigger burr for, for getting in, undercutting the, the, the edge. Get rid of that. So this, will, this undercuts the edge, which I like. Yep. That goes on the big chuck. Right, and you just hand hold the, piece, hand hold the pieces. And, so hand uh, holding the piece yep. against the turning point right and then um, all that diamond work for me is the roughing out process so then I use these um, stone uh, artificial stone rubbers or um, files if you like stone files mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they're used with um, a bit of water and you go over the whole surface rubbing right so this stone here, for instance, it's about a thousand grit. And that's a lot finer than the, uh, the diamonds. This one here is 200 grit. Okay. Much coarser. So I'd start yeah. off with this one before I move on to these Final finer ones. grits. Wow. So I like to make hand holded pieces um, rather than pendants so much. Okay. I make, I okay. Make both. Right, this 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 scale of hardness. How does how does the old river rocks now grey? Um, is it grey wacky? Well, the grey wacky. Uh, I think that's about probably maybe a little harder, um, six and a half to seven maybe. Okay, have you got any of that handy? Grey wacky. Um, it varies quite a bit. Here's a here's a bowl that I'm working that's, on. That's quite nice actually, isn't it? It's just so, ordinary rocks out the river, but yeah, it, yeah, it just does look. Don't cool. cost you anything. Pick them up, and in, in um, I, I go out to Pukarua Bay All or right. Makara Beach. Yeah, good, good grey wacky out there. Okay, it all comes down to probably the Wanganui River, does it? Or uh, uh, no, or uh, New Zealand is made up of. Um, Pretty much grey wacky all over, apart okay. from the volcanic areas. Right. So yeah. do you have to do you have to know a bit of geology and? Uh, it helps. It helps, yeah. does it? Right. And what about the greenstone, the the uh, the jade? Is that well? Let's that... get word rid of the word greenstone because it has no actual meaning. 
Okay. You're talking about a green stone, which yes. legally might be plastic, glass, oh, serpentine, okay. Could green be anything. quartz. Well, what is it? What is its uh, proper name? Is well, in New Zealand, uh, most carvers would like to use the term uh, ponamu for New right. Zealand jade. Yep. Nephrite jade, or just the word jade. Okay. They're all good and legal. Right. Okay. So if you buy something that's called genuine New Zealand greenstone, you could be buying. It could anything. be anything. Right. Right. Including synthetic. Yep. You've got no yeah. legal comeback. Right. But if people yes. wanted to to pick some of this stuff up, where would be the the places to go? Well, you can walk uh, the, the west coast beaches. The west coast beaches is the South and Island. You're allowed to pick up jade pebbles. Oh, all off, right. Off the South Island. Yeah, but what beaches. about the rivers? The there's, rivers, there's sort um, of... there are they're under Naitahu protection, or Ngati Waiwai, for instance, on the west coast. Okay. So it's a bit, so, uh, bit of a no-no, is it? No, you, you, you can only go to those areas with uh, Maori friends or Maori permission. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's the protocol for it. Yeah, yes. Very good. Very um, good. Okay. And so someone someone gets a big hunk of uh, this stuff here off the off the beach or somewhere. Grey wacky. Well, anybody yeah. can use grey wacky. How, how, does you, how do you go ahead... And do you, do you slice it, or do you just grind it down from that? I choose the natural pebbles. So, you, so this was the shape of the pebble I, I picked up off right. uh, Macro Beach. So you didn't have to cut that in half first. No, or no, no cutting it. Well, just grinding it out, into just it, grinding out. Yeah. And it's the same with the the jade pebbles. It's a natural shape of the jade pebble. Okay. And, it's, uh, uh, it's a motley green, sort of inanga green, with a bit of kokapu, the the brown flecks through it. Okay. Golly Named gee. after the the kokapu uh, fish. Right. So there's different 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 colours, different shades within the. Oh yes. Uh, for instance, I like the yellows. And here's a a nice piece of New Zealand yellow jade. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Really to big. me, that's uh, a very precious gem. But, you know, this is the outside. It's a soft, right. limey-looking yep. piece of rock. So right. I've got So how would, you, how would you cut that? Well, You've this has a... been sawn with a diamond saw. A diamond saw. Uh, that's how I got it. It was given to me by a good friend down the west coast. All right. Um, so I've got to decide what to carve out of this, and I'll carve a single piece. Mm. I won't chop it up into little bits. Right. I don't see any point in that. No. Um, so then we have the kokapoo, um, with the pale, brown, brown spots here. In this case it's fairly opaque, and depending on how you cut the stone, you'll get different patterns with the spots coming out. All right, so it's a bit of a grain through. Yeah. So if you look at this end, it's different again. Yeah. Yep. And that's the natural outside. Right. So you've uh, got to sit back and look at that and think about what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And Yeah. yeah. So this is a, a fairly standard piece of nephrite. Um, you've got quite a lot of rind, or what we call the rind or skin. Yeah. That'll be softer stone. So the good stone is all in this core. Okay. And when you're looking for jade, the pebbles and boulders are almost always uh, oval, elongated. All right. And that's because of the grain. The grain runs lengthways. Right. Okay. It's almost like a wood grain. So they've 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 come out of the mountain or something, and um, what gone down rivers have they to get a bit? Well, this is this is rolled down the river a bit. Yeah. Um, the crystals they're elongated crystals, so. That's the way it wears right, okay. in the ground and in the rivers mm. over you know, millions of years. Um, here's a, it's difficult to see, but um, this is a good quality piece of jade. Really you dark, see isn't it? the um, edge there? I think so. You get that deep green colour. Um, kaharangi, you'd call it. And this was the natural outside surface of the boulder. It would have been a beautiful boulder, mm. all naturally polished. 
Whereabouts would that, could that have come from, the South it's, Island again? Uh, it probably came from the Marsden area, that piece. The yellow one came from the uh, Arahura River, as, as did this Kokopu piece. Gosh. So that each river has its own type of stone. Okay. So, um, for instance, this, um, this is a pre-European adz, jade adz, and almost certainly that came out of the Arahura River. Where's the, that? In the South Island? Uh, it's, a, it's quite a big river behind Hokitika. Oh, okay. So the stone would have come out of uh, that river. Right. It's the same with, with some of these um, pendants. Um, that's a typical inanga, these two uh, inanga. That's a cloak pin, a little face carved into it. Mm. This has been used as a chisel as well as an earring. And these are other ear drops. It's also been used as a chisel. And this one, uh, which is very rare, is a lure, a fishing lure, made of jade. Wow. And you can see this little platform here. That's where the barb, um, probably a bone barb, would be lashed on. Right, I'm hoping to get a... And then it's towed through the water to catch a, a kahawai, maybe. Mm. Shoal right. fish. Quite a collection, isn't it? So those are all pre-European Maori. Yeah. And we have this adz, which is very early type, with the... Um, the narrowed tang or waist of the adz where it's lashed on to the wooden handle. Right. So these tanged adzes are, um, are rare. Right, and these are part of your collection, are they? Yes, well, yeah. yes. Um, this one I actually bought at auction. Okay. Um, and of course the, um, the tiki. If that will stay there or not. No. <laughs> But uh, um, I think people can see it anyway. So this is a pre-European tiki. So this would have been carved out. Carved with oh, stone three, tools. Three, four hundred years ago, would it? Or uh, anything two. from, say, three hundred years to eight hundred years ago. Wow. The side here is a different uh, patina, if you like, a wear. That relates to when it was an ads. It was an ads originally. So those okay. two sides there, and this two cut marks relate to the ads that originally was. The blade was here. Okay, yes, yes. Now, on the belly here, if you look at it under a microscope, it's also very worn, which uh, suggests a good age. Then we have, on the back here, one hole that's worn through, suspension hole. Hmm. The second hole, which is almost broken through. Right. A third hole, which is being ground and drilled, hmm. but not finished. And then a later period hole. It's a biconical hole, drilled from both sides. So this, this Heitiki has seen a lot of history. It has, hasn't it? Which I don't know, sadly. And that would have been given to an elder or a chief or something, would it? Oh, or yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a person of high position would mm, wear this. Mm. Um, sadly, or uh, my good luck, I suppose, I found it in a Rotorua junk shop. God, oh, gee. And I was able to purchase it. Mm. Yes. The odd Mary. Right. So, i still got a bit of polishing to do on this yet. But you've got some nice green um, coming through. It's a full-size traditional Mary. Wow, it is big, isn't it? Mm. What does it weigh like? Oh, I don't know what it weighs. Quite a couple of kilos or so, would it? Yeah, probably. I've got this one here, which is it's not particularly good stone, but I liked it because of the variation of the dark and light. Mm. Uh, and in fact, this light area is a different material. It's got a crystal structure. You might see the odd fleck. Um, haven't finished the butt on this. So, yeah, this is a mixture of, of nephrite and some other material. But uh, it's held together as a merry, a fairly large merry. Yep. Wow. 
And then we have some of the natural. This is some of the natural stuff. Isn't yeah, it? this has come out of, of a river. Um, at some stage, probably in a flood, the boulder has been split in half. Mm -hmm. You've got this big fracture here. Yep. Um, it's all seen some water wear. So early Maori uh, would deliberately pick up a piece like this because it's ideal for making a bigger adze out of. Yes. Woodworking yep. adze. Yeah, it's sort of half half made already. Right, just the right shape for something. By like nature. That. Yeah, yeah. But other pieces, um you've got this um cream and green um piece of jade. Um some people prefer this type of colour. It's gorgeous, isn't so it? So it's a cut face and this is the natural oh, the outside original. face. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Really is. And then, if you're really lucky, on the west coast, you might find a pebble like this on the beach. Just on the beach, just sitting there. If you're lucky. Yeah. So to me, mm. this this is a real tonga, a treasure, and I will never cut this. Because to me, of... it's it's so special in itself. Mm. Uh, you've just got to be lucky eh? yeah it's good quality stone it's uh, nicely water worn mm. it's just a nice thing to pick up and yeah fondle right but you get all sorts of colors um i've got this piece which i picked up out of uh, kind of the throw out bin at one of the jade factories <laughs> and we've got purple coloring coming in here creams a bit of enunga in the center but it isn't gorgeous, isn't it? And again, I, I I don't know what to do with this piece. It's so unusual. Mm. And then you... Um, oh, here's a piece of jade um, from uh, inland Otago. Get a good look at that. Uh, quite a different colour pattern to it. Um, this was given to me by Russell Beck years ago. He had found it. But a, a slate or something. No, it's no, jade. Just, just jade, yeah. It's jade, yeah. Unusual. Mm. And then we even get red jade. By Jabs, there is quite a bit of variation, isn't there? Now, I have to tell you, um, this has been heat treated. Heat treated? Yeah. Has that caused the coloration? This or? causes the red to come out. So. Again, Russell Beck uh, did a lot of experimentation because he found a lot of adzes had been hardened through heat treating. All oh, right. And only works with medium quality stone. Top quality, you don't, you wouldn't heat treat it. Okay. But the medium quality hardens a little bit through um, heating up in a fire, and it changes to these reds. Wow. So, yep. Um, this was natural, yeah. Uh, with red veins running through it, we'd call it tota weka. Okay. Uh, means weka blood. Right, okay. But um, being artificially induced, I suppose you could still call it tota weka, but um, it's not the real stuff. Right. But it is jade. Yeah. But it would have. Can anybody tell if it has been heat treated? Is it just a little uh, bit harder? Or? Well, the average person wouldn't know. Wouldn't know. Um, no. But most carvers well, they should have know. some idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. So it gives you a, a, a rough, rough review. rundown yeah. On, yeah. on the jades. You know, there's a box full of different jades there. That right. Bits that you picked up from yeah. here and there and traded and all or sorts. picked up. Or, yeah. um, is, there, is there anything toxic about the dust that comes off it or anything like that? Yes, you don't want to be breathing in the dust. Okay, is, so you put it under the water. Uh, you work with water. So I have a, a gravity-fed water container here. Yeah. Tap and a hose comes to a point here. Yeah. So that hose will drip onto the diamond burr, which keeps all the dust down. Yeah, and it keeps. Yeah. So that the slush goes down the sink, and then I have a bucket to empty every now and then. Yeah. So it's a very simple setup. Mm. Um, other people. We'll throw more money at it. Yeah. 
but it's not really necessary, is it? No, no, you can no. work simply. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a production carver. Mm. I, I mostly carve one-off pieces. Yeah. And um, they sit there until they sell. Right. Sometimes they sit there for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the name of it. But the, everything yeah, so will go, everything will sell eventually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Well, I hope people enjoy this movie. Um, I don't know whether there's anybody uh, else with a collection of jade or the knowledge that you've got. Uh, and yeah, um, most jade carvers will have, have special have, bits of jade they won't cut. Right, right. Um, or sell one mm. or the other. But uh, I pulled out some other, uh, for instance, here we have um, some Guatemalan. Oh, uh, so it's not just New Zealand that has this Oh, no. Stuff. Now this, this is not nephrite, this is jadeite. Okay. And jadeite is found in Burma and Guatemala and a little bit in California. Wow. It's harder on the Mohs scale, it's, it's around about eight. Uh, seven and a half, eight. Okay. Um, what about this nephrite stuff that they they um, put on the TV? The Canadian guys. Yeah, that's that's all nephrite. Okay. And, and British Columbia, Canada. Right. They have a huge um, mountain of jade. Golly jade. Okay. And um, at the moment, the Chinese they have an annual sale up there. Um, in BC and in, in, in the Yukon as well, 90% of the sold jade is being bought by the Chinese. Wow. Yeah. And big pieces on They're the, stockpiling it. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, uh, I did pull out some other pieces, John. So these are uh, some others. Yeah. So this little pile here, um, it's not necessary uh, good quality. But it's a range of colours of, of jadeite, mainly. And this is New Zealand, is no, it? No, this is all Chinese. Oh, this is all Chinese. So they've got their own... They've got their own stone, nephrite in the north. Okay. And jadeite from Burma. All right. Coming into mainly South China. So you get, you get a lovely range of colours. You do. Uh, browns, greens, whites. And you've been... Have these been carved, have they, or...? Yeah, they, they, these are just what we call tourist junk okay. in China. You buy these very very cheaply uh, on the street and souvenir shops. All right. Uh, uh, anything from five dollars, ten dollars, New Zealand in that range. Good stuff. Um, but on the other hand, you want to see a, a quality piece of carving. You've got this nephrite white jade. We, in English, call it mutton fat. And very, very fine carving on this little duck who's holding water lilies in its beak. So the carving is beautiful and so fine. I don't know if you can pick up on that. but So this is from the Ming period. When was that? Uh, we're talking about 1600, 1650. Wow. So this is really top carving compared to these very rough or crude carved tourist items. Okay. So the old Chinese valued the white nephrite. They liked the white. Most highly. They? Right. The jadeite came into China about 1600 from Burma and became popular because there's a, a very bright, uh, almost emerald green in the jadeites, sometimes called imperial green. Um, and that, in the jadeite range, is the highest price. Okay. Where in the nephrite, it was the white, the pure white, that was highly prized. Right. And I see you've got some books there, so you've, the research is ongoing, is it? Ongoing. Um, of course, you've got this New Zealand Ponamu by Russell right. Beck right. and Micah Mason. Um, you mentioned Rick. And um, it covers jade sources and jade carvings. Uh, for instance, here's, here's a range of, of different colours of New Zealand jade. Okay. 
Well, we better not do too much in case we go. Uh... Uh, but we've got some carvings in here somewhere. Yeah. Um, well, just gorgeous, aren't they? So a range of, of different carvers work. Yeah. John Edgar. Uh, we've got Don Salt. Um, this is a recent, uh, fairly recent graduate. Um, what was his name? Paul Bradford. Right. Um, so it's quite strong in New Zealand, the uh, the people coming through the schools or universities. Uh, well, you can take jade carving at Taipotini Polytech in Greymouth. All right. Um, that's the main source of learning. Okay. Otherwise, if you've got a little bit of skill, you might get a job in one of the jade factories. I could take a if a right, right. space to take you on. Okay. This piece here is a magnificent piece, world class. It's a, a jade bowl with a lid and a loose ring by Don Salt. Gosh. And I have to say, Don Salt is uh, probably our top master jade carver in the country. How would you do a ring on the handle like that? You'd have to ask Don. <laughs> that's, that's pretty incredible, isn't but it? But the um, old-time Chinese not only made a single ring, they, they would make a chain of rings right. out of one piece of jade. Wow. So it, as far as this ring carving is concerned, it's, yep. it's nothing new. But Don has the expertise to do it. So that's, that's one good reference book, um, Jade of New Zealand, Ponamu by Russell Beck. Right. Now we have another book here, um, Jade by uh, an American, Roger Carveen, right. which has a very good section by Russell Beck on um, New Zealand jade. But all the other jades are, um, are covered. Um, by others, are they? Well, here, here for instance, is, is a range of jade colours. All the greens through to white, oranges, lavenders. Jade comes in, in pretty much every colour, including black. Wow. It's so beautiful, isn't it? This is also another <coughs> reason why we're trying to get rid of this term, green stone. Yes, yeah, okay. It doesn't apply. Look at this. They're not green. Mm. Uh, here we have some New Zealand carving, Don Salt, for instance, Russell Beck with Siberian Jade. They're really inspirational, aren't they? Here's another Don Salt piece with uh, Kokopu Jade, yep. speckled native trout. And I suppose anybody can do this, can't they, with a little bit of a setup like yours, and a well, bit of patience. Can carve, um, and, um, would they uh, would they be better to uh, what practice on something else like bone first or uh, no? If if you want to use diamond tools, you have really got to diamonds. Go no them. good on bone. You use it on stone. Right. So these are three of my stone pieces: uh, nephrite, jade, bowenite, and grey wacky. Gosh. Okay. And they're just small bowls, but I like them for their uh, form. Right. You can pick them up and mm. turn them around, or we use this one for salt, salt pot. Gosh. No, oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, and that's the current exhibition that's on in 2020, Travelling New Zealand. Yes, yeah, travelling around New Zealand yeah, for the next yeah. few years. Right. Um, now, I, I wanted to show you these pieces to go back to early Chinese jade carving. These are from the uh, Hon Shan period, which is about five and a half thousand years old. So these are five, around about five and a half thousand, thousand years, years old. old. You got to wonder how they would do that sort of thing, wouldn't so you? So the stone uh, has weathered in the ground, um, Uh, being in the ground that long can change the colour of the jade. Okay. Depending on the uh, the minerals surrounding it. Right. But it's rock, isn't it? It's stone. So it's how stone. you've got to wonder how they would have uh, created the the shapes. Oh, exactly the same way as the early Maori 
carved jade. Right. Uh, with stone drills, stone uh, rubbers, right. grinders. Um, a lot of the polishing was done with uh, fine quartz grits. Um, oh yes, okay. Yep. Other other things that they would have found around the place. Yes. Yeah. Now this one here, Chinese work. The jade is from Yemen. It's a new source of nephrite jade. Now this is a bead and very very fine little dragons all around it now this is laser cut laser. so they've used a laser to carve this so you feed the design the program into your computer yeah and then your laser working uh, being a, a cylinder working backwards and forwards and the stone slowly turns as, as the laser is working this way. Gosh. Isn't and of course, a... um, you can make numerous beads exactly the same. Right, in quick, smart time. Yeah. Um, now this one, it's in a jasper stone. It's, uh, I think, a little bit softer than nephrite. Um, so this might be about m five perhaps on the Moe scale. It's a baby dragon and I bought this in, in a back street stone carver um, near Shanghai, a place called Sushao. Um, and I was so totally impressed with the fine detail. There's not a diamond mark left on it. So these are uh, one family carving workshops, back alleys hidden away. And I, I explored uh, this area on my bicycle in China and I ended up buying this piece for a hundred dollars. Wow. Now Isn't with this it? with this amount of carving on a, on say a piece of jade in New Zealand you'd be looking at uh, probably eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Just to cover the time yeah. taken to do it. So with a bit of bargaining in China the prices for the back street carvers are yeah. pretty low. Yeah. Beautiful though, isn't it? It's a beautiful piece of work. Yeah, so it's one of my favourite contemporary carvings. Mm. Now here's another piece with some age. This is 800 BC and it's from Mexico, from the uh, Olmec cultural period. Typical Olmec with the bulbous head. Okay. Um, this is made of Guatemalan jadeite. Mm. Uh, this blue jadeite, um, until recently, the source was unknown, but it's Guatemalan, and this was uh, possibly a burial item. And the foot, there's a broken foot here, that might have been deliberately broken when the thing was buried um, to release the spirit of the jade figure with the human body. And it's still detailed though, isn't it? From how, yeah, long, um, how many years ago? 800 BC. 800 BC, yeah. The, the technique, this is quite simplified compared to, say, this piece. Yeah. You've got grind marks all over it and some drill, drill holes, like in this grind mark, they've drilled a little hole here first. Yeah. And then um, filed, a stone file, into it. The legs are very simple, file angles, and so on. But a um, great little piece. Mm. I bought this, so uh, well, actually I swapped it for several ivory carvings of mine to a jade collector dealer in uh, in Guatemala. Wow. So yes. Isn't that amazing? The color range, the skills mm. needed. Now, the Chinese have always uh, copied uh, or faked, if you like, objects. Right. Now, this is a white nephrite bead, and it's, it's following the, um, the period um, about 1000 BC, the uh, Zhao or Chao uh, period. But in, in reality, it's a copy from the um, 
Qing period, 1700 AD. Okay. So in 1700, the Qing culture were copying their earlier cultures uh, of 1000 BC. So this is a, a very nicely carved copy of those earlier beads. But still hand done, wouldn't it? Hand be? done, yep. Yeah. And what is impressive, of course, they've drilled a fairly small hole right yeah. through it. Mm. That takes some skill, yep. even with a diamond tool. 1700. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what is that? That's uh, 17, 18, 19, 300 years old. Yeah. Isn't that amazing, eh? And that's all the little beads at the bottom. Uh, these are just uh, modern jadeite beads. Um, you can buy very cheaply in tourist shops. They're totally modern. They, they're made out of offcuts. Okay. So when the, when the Chinese are working, and I, I might say Maori, early Maori as well, they didn't throw the offcuts away. In this case, they've turned them into beads. Yep. And often if, if uh, the Maori were had a block of jade, they might cut it into, say, two or three pieces to make an adze and maybe a couple of chisels. Right, right. And then perhaps if a piece was left over, they might have enough for an earring. Okay. Yeah, eardrop. Yeah. Right. And so nothing was wasted. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely magic. Thank you so much. I hope people uh, are really... Oh, give them a bit of a taste. Yeah. Um, and if they've anybody's got wants to know things they can leave comments and uh, and I'll forward them on and um, yeah thank you so much that's really 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 oh I love it <laughs> really interesting cool bananas all right okay yeah it's you know for me research is is ongoing continuous yep. um, right. whenever you want to make a shape a form uh, do the research yeah, you really not got to know the history of what you're doing, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And I like to know the history of the stone. Okay, like yes, yeah. Which river it came from, a creek, or uh, in right. North China, which desert area all it right. came from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of that stuff, mm. it gives you an understanding of the material you're carving, you're working with. Right. Mm. No, that's brilliant, Owen. That's really, really great. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure. All right, cool.